Golf Smarter number 591, published on May 9, 2017, is brought to you by Radio Baseball Cards, the latest podcast from Smarter Podcast. Radio Baseball Cards features the greatest baseball players of the 20th century telling stories about their lives in and around the game. This week, to celebrate Mother's Day, Radio Baseball Cards talks to Minnesota Twins Hall of Famer Kirby Puckett. During his playing days, Kirby was a fan favorite, no matter what city the Twins played in. But for Kirby, his greatest influence was his mother. Radio Baseball Cards is now available in iTunes, the Apple Podcast app, SoundCloud, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Know somebody who wants to play college golf? Get the inside scoop on how to become a student athlete with Nick Tannehill. This is Golf Smarter. Sharing stories, tips, and insights from great golf minds to help you lower your score and raise your golf IQ. Here's your host, Fred Green. Welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Nick. Hi, Fred. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for joining us today. Um, You contacted me. At the end of every show, I say, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, click on the Hey Fred button. And one day, I get an email on the Hey Fred button, and you reached out and said, I want to be on the show. (laughs) <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> and it happens sometimes it really does but you approached me with a really unique uh can you modify unique with really with a unique request um because of the work that you do and that's going to be the topic of today's conversation which is getting your kid into college to play golf right yeah yeah absolutely yeah um oh go ahead well i was going to say that there's probably a lot of uh, middle schoolers and high schoolers that are interested in getting to play golf in college and they don't really understand the process or know what to do to get themselves into college. So I guess that they would come to you, but you work for a company that does this for all sports? Correct. Yeah. I work for a company called NCSA um, and we don't necessarily do golf. So, um, you know, for, uh, families, you know, that are football, that, like that's one of the big ones, basketball, softball, volleyball. There's all these different um, ones that we work with. Like I said, I mainly do golf, but, you know, like I said, I contacted you because I was listening to the show one day and I said, hey, you know, there's probably some listeners out there that, you know, might need some help with recruiting or just, you know, maybe have a general, maybe need a general overview on, uh, you know, recruiting 101 for golf. So, yeah, I, I thought, hey, you know, this would be a great opportunity to educate some families out there. Lucky, Luckily for you, I agreed. <laughs> I agreed that <laughs> yeah, this could be a good uh, venue for you to talk about. So the company you work for, NCSA, we should uh, clarify that it stands for Next College Student Athlete. Very Correct. clean, very simple. And they're at uh, NC- ncsa.org is where you guys can be found, correct? Correct, yeah. So, um, and... Just to give a little background about Please. me personally, like um, I actually was an NCSA athlete too. So really? I, I, yeah, I had the service back whenever I was a, a youngster, and it's it's came a long way since I was there. Um, you know, a lot of cool new things there, but it, it's kind of cool coming around full circle back to them. Yeah, yeah, and and were you a uh, did you re- approach them because you were a golfer? Yeah, correct. Yeah, I I um, I was pretty serious in high school and. And, you know, I, I came from a really small rural farm area in Illinois, like um, kind of near Kentucky. Okay. Right? We don't have a whole lot um, there as far as tournaments. So, you know, I I really did benefit a lot from, you know, that kind of service and helping getting my name out there. Um, but, you know, with that being said, you know, you don't have to have service like that as long as you have a general idea, you know, what I mean, of what you're looking for and, and you know, how to um, get your name out there, I suppose. I really hope your boss doesn't hear this. <laughs> Although you are a dot org, it's you're saying, yeah, you don't really need us, but we can definitely help, right? Yeah, well, um, you know, like a lot of people that, don't understand the process, I think, is why they need you, because it's their, maybe correct. it's their first kid going through college or or they had kids in college, but they weren't athletes trying to become college athletes. So, you know, any hand holding, it's it's really overwhelming. I I, I put two through college and it's very overwhelming to know all the different people you have to write to sign up for, get you know, uh, advice from all the consultants, the people that get hired to look at your 
<laughs> everything from your your sports to your essays. I mean, you need all the help you can get. Correct. Yeah. And, um, you know, like, like you said, a little handholding is definitely, you know, what something like NCSA can do, you know, just help to guide you in the right direction. If you had questions, I mean, we're there seven days a week to answer them. So, um, you know, and, and like my position, I'm considered a head recruiting coach. So, um, we have, uh, like I have 30 minute sessions with families, um, every single week I have about 20 to 30 a week where, you know, we individualize a game plan for, that single family. So, you know, if that's something you're interested in, you know, feel free to come on by and mention my name for sure. And, um, and, uh, you know, we can definitely help you out for sure and help getting some, get you some exposure. Wow. So with 20 to 30 sessions a week, half hour sessions, you must have a long list of clients that you've worked with. Yeah, I have about, um, about 900 to my name right now. Um, yeah, it, it can be, uh, it can be a little, a lot, but you know, the way we manage it, I, I really feel like I am, you know, reaching out individually to each one of them, um, because it's not 900 at one time. Um, yeah. you know, it's, it's just whenever, <laughs> right, of course. right. Yeah. It's, it's just whenever, you know, they reach out to me and I periodically reach out to them. Um, it makes it a, a definitely a lot more manageable than, you know, just 900 kids, um, emailing you every day. Cause you know, you're not going to have a sing- a question every single day. Sure. It's a it's a very long process, especially for, you know, freshmen uh, and sophomores. And it's it's mainly just, you know, kind of getting them on their feet and getting them moving. Yeah. Do you mind if I ask what your success rate is on getting these kids into college to play sports? Yeah. I mean, I don't have like a, a complete percentage for you, but um, I can tell you, you know, if if you're a, 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 a men or women golfer, you know, and you're very serious about um, you know, going to the next level and you're open to, um, you know, pretty much anything, you know, whether, you know, wherever that college is, you know, we can definitely be able to help you out. Um, a lot of people, you know, come to us for scholarship help, which we can do that, but our main focus is to find you a play to place to play college golf. And like I said, if you're serious about trying to go to that next level and play, you know, we'll be definitely be able to, you know, help you out for sure. Um, you know, as like I said, as long as you're working hard in the course, trying to improve, um, you know, a coach is going to see that in you for sure. I'm curious what happens to kids that are D3 level golfers, the potential of being a D3 level golfer, but they're a Stanford student. You know, they have the potential of being a Stanford student. How do you help them with, with that to say, look, you know, yeah, you think about your whole life. Do you want to play golf or do you want to, you know, walk around with Stanford on your resume? Um, how do you resolve that for them? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely plenty of uh, plenty of good D3 schools out there that they can play that, you know, may not be a Stanford level, but they're, you know, still a top academic school. So, for example, Carnegie Mellon in uh, in Pittsburgh, that's a, considered a D3 school. Amherst mm-hmm. in, in, uh, in the Boston area, that's considered a D3 school. Um, Occidental in California, um, McCallum. Uh, shoot, I can't think of the name. Um, there's another one in Wisconsin. <laughs> it's Mac. I know it's what they stand for. They are another good D, uh, D3, you know, high level school. You know, that's kind of the target I would approach. Um, and the main thing with those kind of, you know, Harvard's and Stanford's is those coaches just want to get, see you get admitted first, um, before they, you know, really consider you, um, as a, as a uh, potential athlete. And kind of like you said, you know, still, you'd still get that nice, degree, especially like at Mellon, especially at, you know, Occidental, but, um, you know, it may not be just the Stanford degree, but it'd still be a good one. So that's kind of the direction maybe I would head with some of those students. Right. Right. Um, how many of these students are, are, what, let me, let me ask it this way. Is your concern getting these kids to be successful college athletes? Or are you just trying to find, help them find the right mech, uh, match to get into a college to play golf? I like to do both. You know, I, mm. I, I ask them questions. I say, you know, what's your major? Um, how, what kind of size are you looking for? Are you looking a little bit closer to home? Are you looking, you know, a little bit farther away? Is there a certain spot that you're, you know, trying to head? And I will, you know, come up with a list of schools that I think might be a good fit for them based on the information that they provided me, what they're shooting in tournaments right now, and, you know, what the team or what the team that's shooting, uh, what their team is shooting right now. So what that potential colleges, um, averaging in tournaments. So, uh, you know, I, I try to make a nice list for them. And like I said, 
it's it's kind of a mixture of both. I want them to be successful as a student, um, you know, and fit their needs there, and I want them to be successful on the golf course as well, for sure. And I want them, you know, to hopefully get some playing time immediately, you know, freshman year, sophomore year, because um, no one likes to sit the bench. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure there are many parents that got their kids started in golf with the idea of if this kid gets good, they can get a scholarship and I don't have to pay for college and they can play golf. Uh, I remember years ago, I mean, this is not the first time I've, I've covered this topic on Golf Smarter, um, but it is been, it has been a long time since I've done it. And I'm just curious to know, are there scholarships out there for, for golfers? Absolutely. Um, and just to give you an idea, there's a lot more girls scholarships out there than men. I would um, think so. Yeah. 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 Due to like, uh, sports like football. Um, sure. you know, they are, uh, those are because of title there. nine. What is, what is the opposite of football for women? What do they consider? I mean, you have um, to have equal sports, right? Yeah. Probably volleyball and golf would probably be um, you know, the kind of the opposite because, um, I've seen a lot of schools, they don't maybe not have a men's team, but they have the women's golf team. Um, and, you know, kind of answering your question as far as scholarships out there, there are going to be lots of, um, opportunities for women, especially, uh, we don't have enough women on NCSA. That's how many opportunities there are out there. And, um, and as far as men, there's definitely opportunities. Um, as far as understanding how that scholarship happens, um, you get you get uh, academic money, you get athletic money at a Division One, Division Two, and NAIA level. Um, and Division Three, it's kind of get where this is where it kind of gets confusing. But Division Three, you're only offered the merit scholarship money. Um, so there isn't necessarily an an athletic scholarship, but generally they're going to be more of the private schools that can offer, um, you know, plenty of academic money to make it affordable for the family. If that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> excuse me, I tried to <clears throat> get away with that and I couldn't, um, <laughs> let, let's go over the process of what it takes, uh, for someone to, for a family to get involved with you or to even, prepare themselves to create a uh, college student athlete? Yeah. So, um, you know, generally the, the first thing I always ask a family um, whenever they are registering with us is, you know, how serious are you about, you know, wanting to do this? Um, you know, because that's a, that's a big thing. Is it, is it the student athlete that wants this or is it the parent? Mm. Um, Cause I've seen, you know, I, I, yeah, I see it every single day, you know, where, I try to reach out to the family and I hear nothing back. I hear nothing back. And, you know, from, for that just tells me, you know, maybe this student athlete isn't a hundred percent, you know, dedicated to playing in college or maybe, you know, they, maybe they've changed their mind, you know? So, um, I'm sorry to interrupt here, but I, I find yeah. this part really interesting. Um, do you ever like pull the kid aside and say, do you really want to do this? Because you get the sense the parents are really pushing hard, but you aren't getting the buy-in from the kid as much. Yeah. And I definitely, um, you know, I, I try to text them individually. Um, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of my way of, uh, you know, reaching out to them cause you know, I want to be there for them, you know, and, uh, and you know, for me, I was, I was dedicated. I was a hundred percent, you know, I'm, I'm going to play in college golf, you know, wherever that is. And for some kids, you know, that's, that's not for everyone, you know what I mean? And, um, some kids, they just want to, you know, go out there and have some fun with their friends and, and, there's definitely club golf opportunities out there for them. So, you know, you go to a big 10 school, play club, club golf, and there's nothing wrong with that. You're still playing in tournaments. You're having a good time with your friends. It's just not the workload that would be, you know, for a D1, D2, NAI, D3 level. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's the, that's one of the big questions is, you know, how dedicated is that student athlete, you know, to, to golf? So let's say, let's just go ahead and say, yeah, they're, they're a hundred percent dedicated. So, um, you know, then we just kind of go ahead and dive in, start getting some information from them as far as, um, you know, height and weight and, and, um, you know, general things like that. And I really am a big believer in recruiting videos too. Um, you know, I really want to see, uh, the fundamentals of a swing and that's how, um, in, in term averages as well. So, um, that's, two big things coaches definitely take a look at is, is what are you shooting in tournaments and your recruiting video too. Yeah. What are the types of things? Are you introducing them to coaches or are, are, um, are you contacting the coach on behalf of the student? 
I kind of um, show them the ropes. So I'll show you how to um, put together an email. I'll show you how to talk, put together your recruiting video. And then I just kind of, um, you know, I kind of let go of your hand and say, here you go. Hmm. Um, and I'll, I'll review anything if they want, if they want me to, if they send me a re, um, an email before they fire it off to a coach, you know, make sure it's good to go. I'll review that for them. Or, or if a coach emails them, they're not really sure what to say back, you know, I'll, I'll be always there for them too. But like I said, our, our service is kind of like, it's kind of, um, up to them, you know, how much, how much do they want to, you know, reach out to coaches and, and I will send their profile out to some coaches, but, um, a majority of it is in where they're going to see the most successes is them, um, reaching out to coaches and, and introducing themselves, letting them know, letting the coaches know that they are interested rather than me letting, letting them know that they're interested, if that kind of makes sense. So you're just prepping them to go talk to a coach getting them Correct. ready. Get kind of giving them some clues of what they're looking, the coaches are looking for. Correct. Yeah. And how to, you know, properly form an email. I think that's one of the big things too. Mm -hmm. um, tell me what is, is not required, but necessary on a good recruiting video that they're sending to the coach. What should be included? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, generally I like to start and just go through the back. Um, start with the driver, hit a, hit a couple, um, from the side view and a couple from, uh, from behind. So I would say the caddy view and then from behind, you can look these up on YouTube on how to make a good golf video as well. So a, a steady camera. So maybe if you bring a tripod out to the driving range and, and just kind of work your way through the bag. So two shots with, um, from the side and two from behind, as far as, you know, with the driver, um, maybe with a hybrid next and then, um, four iron, um, a seven iron, a nine iron, um, and then some, a, a wedge shots from maybe a hundred and in, and then, um, same thing. So like two and two and, um, and then you can do some chips around the green, some putts. Pretty simple, but it'll take some time to put together. Um, and you can throw this on YouTube and um, pull that link, and that'll go into every email that you send out to coaches. So, oh. you know, as soon as they open up your email, they have that that YouTube link right there and, and can uh, watch your um, your video with your with your swings and then your short game on there too. Kind of a long-winded answer, but... <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. I don't mind. We have time. Um, and then... What about bonus materials? <laughs> bonus, he does with air quotes. Yeah. Bonus materials um, that you could send, including maybe an interview with the kid, um, uh, if they've had been lucky enough to get any news coverage, uh, anything like that. What other things other than, you know, because everyone's going to send in two swings with each club, right? Right, yeah. Are there things that are going to really catch a coach's eye that are be uh, outside of that? Yeah, I tell you what, the main thing, and I say this to all my families, is make these emails unique. Stay away from copying and pasting an email over and over and over. It's it, The coach looks at it almost as disrespectful and almost um, you know, just unprofessional. Um, Especially if they're reading it and it has a name of a different college on it. Yeah, exactly. Which I mean, how probably much happens. Oh, it does every day, I'm sure. So, you know, how much effort are you really putting into this? You know, is this something that you're actually really interested in or you just kind of want to half do? Um, so, yeah, that's my main thing is making every email unique. So talking about why you're interested in that school, pulling up some statistics, maybe even congratulating them on a high finish recently. Small things like that. Do you your know, research. Make, yeah, exactly. Take your time with these. These aren't going to be, you know, done overnight. You're not going to email 20 coaches in one day. If you do, it's not going to be good. It's kind of like writing a, a term paper. You know, you're not going to do it in one day. And, you know, let's say if uh, in college, <laughs> it's just not going to happen. It's not going to turn out good. So, um, yeah, that's, and as far as some bonus material, there's always a recruiting questionnaire online. Usually about 95 percent of the schools have it, I would say. You can find those on the um, athletic, web, athletic website, um, and you just find search for something um, that says like recruiting questionnaire or prospective student athlete form. So I would just like to pair those with the emails. It's just another way for that coach to view your name and you know say, hey, I'm I'm serious about doing this. So yeah. that would that would be my kind of suggestion. That's interesting. As, uh, so you're saying that that a uh, a uh, uh, well-crafted email is going to jump out 
possibly more than a doesn't even have to be a slick video, just a, a video, right? Correct. I mean, yeah. There it, may be things on the video that they don't want to see. Correct. Yeah. So as long as, um, like I said, it's it's more of just how much effort you're putting into this. So if, as long as your video is sta- is is good as and it's not wobbly or anything, and mm. you kind of work your way through the bag, um, it, it's gonna be really good for that coach. And like I said, if you send it off with a quality email, take the time to fill out the questionnaire too, you're going to be ahead of the game and you're going to be in the top percentile of um, communication with um, coaches. So, uh, you know, small things like that are, will make the biggest difference. I've seen the responses from coaches. I look at emails every day and, and coaches that really appreciate that, that uh, personal touch on those emails because like I said earlier, you know, they see that these are unique and this, this student athlete must be very serious with me if he's taking the time to write out a 15 minute email when, you know, he could be just copying and pasting and blasting out emails. Mm-hmm. Um, what is, uh, and the recruiting questionnaire, it's not a standard form. Every university, every college has their own questionnaire and things that they're looking for. Yeah, most of them have, um, most of them have the recruiting questionnaire. It's pretty much generally the same information over and over. So they can get kind of redundant, but, um, I just tell my family, say, hey, you just, this is, this is one of them. You just got to suck up and do, um, you know, it's, it's going to be well worth it to take your time and do these because, um, uh, basically it's, it's giving your contact information and information about your golf game to these coaches. So, um, it's just a direct way to get in contact with a coach. That is another way besides an email, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, I have so many questions written down here. I'm trying to figure out which, <laughs> which direction to go because everything that you say, I'm like, Oh, I got another question to, to deal with. Um, so it was into the other day I was uh, out at the driving range and there were, there was, and it's the local nine hole course with the, you know, hitting off of mats, but <clears throat> they had middle school competition going on and they had yeah. in this County, they have 12 different schools competing both public and private schools are competing on these on these little golf tournaments for middle schoolers up to eighth grade, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and some of them had swings that, you know, I was just standing at the first tee for a while. And some of them have swings that are like, okay, this kid's impressive. And then there's swings you go, this kid's going to be playing with me on the weekends, <laughs> just playing on the weekends. Yeah. What quality of player should be pursuing this? I mean, if you're a 15 handicap and you're a junior in high school, is this something you should be pursuing? Yeah. I mean, if you're dedicated and, and a coach, you know, sees that you're trying to get better, you know, if, the, if you're more than the weekend golfer and you're out there grinding every day and you're still a 15 handicap, you know, if and if I had some room on my team and I saw that you were going to, you know, work your butt off. I would still, you know, try to have you on. Like I said, if I had some room now, you know, maybe you're not on the best universities team or, you know, maybe you start out at the junior college level, which, you know, happens quite a bit, you know, and, and that's fine. You know, I, I kind of wish I went to the junior college level first, mm. um, just to save some money, you know, especially, yeah. <laughs> which, yeah, but, um, there's always, like I said, there's always going to be a school out there for you. As long as you're, I'd say below an 85, you know, that's a, that's a good number. Um, a 15 handicap, but if you're below an 85, there's going to be room for you somewhere out there. It's just how much are you going to, um, hustle to get your name out there and, you know, let coaches know about you and, and let them know how dedicated you are to the game. And you're saying below 85 in tournament play or just your regular play? Yeah, I would say 85 and below in tournaments um, for men. And for women, that it can, it can even be 100 and below. Really? Um, there's, yeah. I had I have coaches. Uh, I had a coach two weeks ago, a D3 school, um, email me and said, hey, you know, I, I need some 2017 golfers. I'll take 100 and I'll make them better. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's going to be opportunity to that out there for women especially. So men, you know, like I said, 85 and below is a good number. And and, um, you know, possibly a 90, you know, like I said, just depends on how much time you have to get better. And, and, um, and for women, yeah, I mean, there's lots of opportunity out there. You snuck in two words that I'm going to amplify for you, mate. You said, if they have room, what kind of availability do most colleges have to add new players? Because I would think that mostly, and this is something I learned 
previously in conversations like this, is that it's probably the juniors and seniors on the college level that are getting to play in tournament play. So incoming freshmen, there's probably not a whole lot of room for you. I'm guessing. Yeah. And, you know, the coaches realize, you know, like you, like you just said that juniors and seniors probably get the most playing time. So they're going to work on developing those freshmen and or freshmen and sophomores and, and have them practicing with the teams to, you know, to, cause they're going to be juniors and seniors someday. So, um, but there's five golfers that travel to events. So let's just say five juniors and seniors go to a tournament. Generally, there's going to be about three to four freshmen and sophomore on the team too. So about eight to 10 people are generally, um, size for a golf team. Um, so yeah, eight they're to 10 men, looking, eight to 10 women. Yeah. And sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. Um, so, and generally they're looking to add about two to three people every year or so. Okay. And what kind of tournament play should they have on their resume? Yeah, that's a, that's a big question. So, um, there's a, there's a, site on the internet it's called junior golf scoreboard um and is that dot com can, yep junior golf scoreboard.com mm-hmm. and families can go to that and look up tournaments that makes them ranked on the junior golf scoreboard so um it's kind of like a ranking system for men's and women's golfers um and obviously the higher you're ranked on there the you know more kind of uh attention you're going to grab from from coaches so I, that's one of the first places I point families to as far as looking for tournaments. And in order to be ranked on there, you'll have to play in four of those in a calendar year. So, um, and that doesn't have to be a specific tour as long as they're on there. So AJGA, Hurricane, um, Golf Week Junior Tour. Um, like I know in California, there's the uh, Toyota Tour Cup. Um, you know, there's there's plenty of other instances out there. Illinois has a uh, prep tour that's kind of uh, getting big. So um, there's a bunch of different tours out there. I really don't care which one you play on or, you know, what which ones that you're looking at, as long as you have the four and you get ranked. So coaches can pull your name up and see some scores that you're shooting. Yeah. And that it, gonna make sense. Yeah. And if you have a good ranking, you should start. You should definitely brag about it. Absolutely. Email, yeah. yeah. Make that jump yeah, off the page. An, Absolutely. That's another thing that you can, you know, talk about immediately. Like, uh, for example, like I saw a North Carolina Tar Heel commit. He was ranked about 600. So, um, you know, there there's opportunity out there for sure for um, for golfers, you know, especially with that junior golf scoreboard ranking. I don't think enough families know about that for sure. Oh, that's a great that's a great tip. Absolutely. Yeah. And what point should they. Well, they've been thinking about it for a while. Right. I mean, they've been talking about in the family around the table, they're talking about, yeah, I want to play golf in college. I want to play golf in college. At what point do they need to, let's just say, contact you to keep to to move forward in the process? Should be there be in their junior year or their senior year? And should it be the fall semester or the spring semester? What's the best time to start the process for each family? Yeah. Um, you know, I even have some eighth graders that I talk to, um, you know, they're, they're well ahead of the game. Wow. Um, yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. Especially if your player is going to be, you know, if you can tell that this is going to be a high profile player, you know, and you know, well, what parent doesn't good. think their kid's going to be a high yeah, profile I should, player? I should, Come on. I should reword that. I should reword <laughs> if the that. coach, do you ever <laughs> talk to the kids coaches? Um, not the, uh, high school coaches. Okay. No. Okay. Um, but I, like I, I, I chat with some of the college coaches every once in a while too. Um, but let's get back to my other so question. You, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, um, so freshman year is a good time to start, you know, just basically you're going to be learning about the process a lot and, um, you'll see your higher profile D one schools. Like I have one kid that's already committed to Oklahoma state, um, as a freshman. So, um, you know, there, there's definitely schools out there that start recruiting as a freshman, but for, for most families, um, there, it's going to start probably sophomore year, but freshman year would probably be good to start attaining that junior golf scoreboard ranking and just learning about how the process works essentially and when to start reaching out with the emails and kind of understanding all the rules. Wow. This is great information. I really appreciate oh, it's, it. It's a lot to take in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really is. So that's the beauty of podcasts. They can listen to it multiple times if they miss anything. Yeah. But one of the things you don't want to miss is juniorgolfscoreboard.com. 
to look up what tournaments are of value for you. And of course, ncsasports.org. And that is the next college student athlete, but don't you don't have to spell it out. N as in Nancy, csasports.org. And of course, this is for the U.S. only, isn't it? Uh, no, we have lots of international students. I uh, I work with families. I, I have one in uh, Iran, all the way to Malaysia. Wow. Um, yeah. But and, they're still uh, trying to get I, into U.S. colleges. These aren't for international correct. colleges. Yeah, correct. They're still trying to get into international colleges. Um, I have a family that I work with out of the Netherlands, great family. Um, so yeah, we're, uh, we definitely try to help out global families as well. Nice. So just, I'm curious, how was your golf college career? <laughs> well, um, I, you know, I wish I was still playing. I wish I was out there on tour, but <laughs> <laughs> reality hit one day that I wasn't going to make it. So. And what was, and what was that reality for the student, for you as a student? When, when did it, you realize this is probably not going to be my profession? Uh, it's like my junior year of college. I was, uh, I was chatting with our sports psychologist and, uh, I'd just been struggling my junior year, um, uh, on the, on the course. And I think I just had a moment where I remember I started bawling, like, oh, <laughs> kind of man. Put, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, I don't know. It was just one of those things. Where I was like, wow, you know, this probably isn't going to work out. So, um, but yeah, it, I, I look back at it. It was at the time of my life. Um, coach Frank Marsaglia at U university of Illinois in Springfield. He's one of the best coaches in division two. Um, I think he could be the best coach in Division One if he wanted to go up there. Uh, he is a really great guy, and like I said, I had a great experience there. We got to, he got to take me to places I would have never been: um, Puerto Rico, Las Vegas, uh, Florida. You know, we got to play in all the cool, play in all the cool tournaments. And it was because of his dedication. So, um, you know, that was, uh, that was, like I said, I look back at it with a smile for sure. Oh wow. That's, <laughs> that's a great story. But I, I totally understand how you, you must have felt at that moment because uh, ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to be a disc jockey. And I was on the air as a paid disc jockey in San Francisco the day of my college graduation. And <laughs> uh, a year later, I was going, okay, now what? It was like, okay, I did it. And it isn't that great? And I'm not that good at it. I mean, I realized I wasn't going to make it to to the upper levels of being a DJ. And I just didn't want to read somebody's playlist all day. And it was like, oh, now what am I going to do? So, <laughs> you know, it, we all have to go through that. And I think that's a lot about college is, you know, everyone thinks that they're going to figure out what they want to do with the rest of their lives. Well, I'm sorry. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with the rest of my life. <laughs> but you found a good yeah. niche for yourself. That's so awesome. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, I'm really enjoying my time here at NCSA. Um, I had a job where I traveled seven days a week, essentially before this, and <laughs> I couldn't do it. <laughs> and it wasn't around was, golf. You, you were a paper no, it pusher. Was not around, yeah, well, uh, sort of. Anyway, <laughs> it's not a, definitely. I'm enjoying my time now for sure a lot more. But um, yeah, I'm really really enjoying my time at NCSA and. I truly believe in what we're doing. Um, you know, we really are impacting some families' lives, you know, and helping them find, you know, their, their path for college golf for sure. And so when they go to ncsasports.org, uh, can they find you there? Or is there a specific way to get in contact with you to get more questions answered? Yeah, you can give us a call um, at our website, or you can give us a call and you can find our number on our website. Okay. Um, and then someone from our team will actually follow up with him as well and, and start chatting with him. Okay. And if they specifically want to talk to you, is that possible? It's like, hey, I, uh, I, I, I really want to talk to Nick. We're old boy. We're old friends. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I, I would definitely love to talk to him for sure. Just uh, go ahead and request for me. Say, hey, I'd love to talk to Nick, the golf head recruiting coach, and they can definitely um, get a hold of me for sure. And as I remind listeners all the time, if you do, in fact, get in touch with Nick, make sure you tell him you heard it about it on the Golf Smarter Podcast. Nick, so much enjoyed this conversation. It was so enlightening. Thank you for coming on and thank you for reaching out. Hey, Fred, I, I really enjoy being here. Uh, I, this was a lot of fun, too. I really appreciate, um, you know, taking the time and uh, getting to know a little bit about recruiting. And like I said, hopefully we'll help out some families, too. If you want to hear more on this topic, episode number 485, published in April of 2015, is called How to Get Your Child into a College Golf Program. 
And then episode number 279 from April 2011 is called Prepping Young Golfers for College. They're both now available to all Golf Smarter listeners for free. Easiest way to get these shows is by downloading the free Golf Smarter app for iOS or Android, or of course in iTunes or the Apple Podcasts app. Don't forget, you can now stream or download any topic or teacher from the archives of Golf Smarter for free. Follow us and communicate with me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or SoundCloud, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, write your comments as an iTunes review. Send me a message through the free Golf Smarter app or click on the Hey Fred button at GolfSmarter.com.